What's going on everybody? Dark Sizzle and Puddin coming at you from Stewart, Florida today. If you're new to the channel, we are a Florida fishing couple and today we go deep sea fishing on Christmas Day and guess what? We slay giant cobia. This is cobia catch clean cook. He's nervous. He didn't get, he didn't eat. Eat him. Something's on him. Something's on him. Fish on. Get him Sizzle. First fish. He's going to the wreck. God, I think he got shark. Real random. Oh. Oh. Dude. All right, guys, Merry Christmas. Out here at a Stewart. I'm really on our first time on the boat for a full trip. It's awesome. It just got wrecked. All right, Darcy got a big fish on. I'm not sure if it broke the leader or if I got sharked. Let's try it again. Or it wrecked me in the wreck. Something happened. Oh, that was a stud. All right, so we did some trolling earlier. Caught a couple little bonita. Nothing too special. So like we said, we're bottom fishing. I got a beautiful grunt we caught this morning on light on a sabiki. Big old J hook right here because where we're fishing, there are monsters that live here. And then I'm gonna just take this J hook and rig it right between his nose, just like so. So the fish gets hooked, let him swim down there, go crazy. That's what I just put down a second ago and got smashed by whatever that big fish was. Got 50 pound leader on here, uh, pink Andy. And here we go. Are we ready to set? Yeah. We're on the on it. Got a very long leader. Probably like 20 foot. They got him. You gotta turn that boat, I'm underneath. Bump. Turn that boat, it's off. Oh. Dude. Ooh, all right, another fish. I'm sure there's a, Darcy thinks it might've been a grouper. So far we cannot get a fish up from the deep. All right guys, so the current's like three knots. So I gotta drive, I'm driving straight south into the current, just in gear, pulling a power drifting. We're at 129 sizzle. We're in a okay. wreck that's in 140. I'm telling her the depths, cause it's going up, 127. So that means it's 13 feet off the bottom. So she may have to reel up a little bit so I don't get caught. Oh yeah, freaking out. Oh yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go. All right, Sizzle's hooked up. <laughs> Sorry, camera battery was dead. Get over here. Real baby. It's on the surface, baby. Get the gaff out. My big cobia, big cobia. Big cobia, baby get his ass. Baby get his ass. Baby get his ass. Get him in the boat, get him in the boat. Ah. Baby. You came up with the gap. Baby, you gotta get this fish. Come on, baby. Gotta Over be here. Him now. Over here, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Get him. Come on, baby. Get him in a bow. Come on, baby. Oh, Woo! Woo! We did it! You ripped a bunch of holes in him, that's okay. Oh, he ripped He's in the boat. I didn't realize he was gonna be that oh, big. Fish on. Hold on. Holy smokes! He tore this gaff up. Stun cobia! <laughs> Holy smokes! Oh my god. Brian, that was a wrong gaff for that bad monster fish. Yeah. Holy crap! Christmas Day cobia! <laughs> good job! Woo! Oh my god. He came Lord. right to the surface. I'm like, oh my god, get the gaff. I knew exactly that it was a monster cobia. They run right to the surface. And he just he just was Freaking wailing out so much, sick. he just got off his gaff. I saw, I saw what happened. He got a nice he got him gaffed pretty good, but yeah, nailed he good. started wheeling like that. And he just ripped right through the gaff on this side. All his meat's exposed. We're still going to have a nice set of meat there. But you know what happens. But you know what, guys? The freaking fish is in the boat. <laughs> That's a nice cove. Woo! Ooh, well, I cooked I coo like a googan, but... Finally! That was crazy. That's okay. I think it's okay that we cooked it all like a googan there for a second. I, Dude, you he know, took off. I gaffed it, he wasn't doing it. He would, Kobe had come to the surface like really calm and collected. And then I gaffed him and he went crazy and like he literally almost ripped the gaff out of my hands. I don't know how he did that without like somebody littering it because I had the weight up in the air. It was a whole freaking mess. We haven't been out here in three months. So you gotta give us a break on it, all right? All right. Fish is in the boat. That's what matters. Let Woo. him calm down, let him calm down. And then I'll pick him up for y'all. But that's a stud right there. That's a 20, 30. You gotta be careful with these fish. Woo! All right. Let's get this blood off the marine mat really fast too, Dark Sizzle. Now you see guys, you get on this and see it's already coming off. You see how easy? Comes right off. I have a crappy, you know, this is a crappy little hose, but see look, it just comes right off. And we're now in the scrubbing. Look at the crab he puked up. Wow. All right, guys, let me show you these wonderful gaff shots. Here's the first one that came out. Yeah, Brian said that that fish almost pulled the gaff out of his hand. Almost did. And then that's where I got him, and he got him in the boat. 
And I like I like the gaff in the middle. That's probably like my favorite spot to gaff. He's the best gaffer. I'm the, the best ever. Right in the middle. Get a sizzle. It's coming up, fully coming up. Get the other gaff. Get the other gaff. Clear it. Nice fish. Cove. Okay. And we're wrapped. It's okay. Good for you. Baby. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Nice job. Nice job. Nice job. <laughs> Holy smokes. Did you all see that? <laughs> woo, woo. Another stud. Holy smokes. <laughs> okay, so that cobia did not act like a normal cobia. He kind of scoped out and then he stayed deep. And I honestly thought I had a grouper or a snapper on. Another stud. Keeper all day. Nuts. You got a bloodbath now, Sizzle. Holy smokes. Kobe on fire. <laughs> All right, guys, here is Kobe number two. This guy is 38 inches to the fork. The first one was 40, so he's a bit smaller, but we're marking fish on the machine, and I think it's just full of cobia. Epic cobia bite going on right now in Stewart. And you guys know the last time we were out here, we just had a ton of them eaten by the S word. Not gonna say it. Um, but I'm gonna post exactly where I caught this beautiful fish on the Fish Angler app, so you guys can come out here and do this too. And don't forget about the awesome Dar Sizzle fishing trip giveaway aboard the beautiful Fish Angler boat. You and a friend could win an all day fishing excursion with me. Let's get him into the Smith fish bag. Thank you. Whew. We don't need no more cobia. That's perfect. No. <laughs> You're allowed two per person. We have a one man limit already, but we're gonna go ahead and move on. We don't need to keep another one. So let's see if we can get something else in the boat. Man, after getting all those, losing all those fish and those sharks, Santa, maybe Jesus, today's Jesus' birthday, of course, really came through. Yes. <laughs> fish gods, Jesus, Santa. We'll take what we can get. Everybody. <sighs> and I also haven't been fishing in a minute, so maybe that's why. <laughs> Got up at 4.30, I feel like I've been up for days. 4.30, got done a lot at Christmas. No one's on the road, no one's at the park a lot. No. Totally awesome. Great. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Time to fillet the biggest cobia that we got in the boat, the first one. It's the next day, we got home super late. And during the winter months, it gets dark so fast. I hate it. That's the only thing I don't like about the winter months. It gets dark at like 5 p.m. So we had a full day out there, but the fish has been chilling in the hair club cooler, getting nice and cold. So he is ready to fillet. And this is one of the biggest ones we put in our boat. So really can't complain, super happy, big fat cobia. And there's definitely some stuff in his belly too. So maybe at the end of this, maybe you'll get to see what's in there as well. So let's dive right into this. These fish are just like the most awkward shaped fish in the world, making it very tough to fillet. So let me see if I can just bend him out real quick. I got him out of the cooler a little early, so that way he's not solid frozen. But they have a much bigger head on them than other fish. So you think you're gonna get a lot of head meat, but in reality, we're not gonna get as much meat as you might think. Of course, there's gonna be plenty of meat. This fish weighed 25 pounds, not complaining. I'm just saying like in proportion to the body size and the head size, it's really not that much. So let's dive right into this. We're gonna use my nine inch blade today from Smith just to make these initial long cuts. And then I'll probably switch over to my go-to seven inch. But here we go. We're gonna go right behind the head. This whole part is just super solid bone. So we're just gonna angle in right here. Of course, super sharp knife gets the job done. And the flies are here. So we're trying to avoid them as much as possible. Um, but don't forget about my promo code, DARSIZZLE15, to save 15% off on all of these awesome knives and anything on their website, plus free shipping. And before I go all the way down, let me just show you. These are these big, crazy uh, serrated edges here that come out of their spine from this top dorsal fin all the way to the front of the head. And those things are gnarly. Those things are dangerous. And cobia get 50, 60, 80 pounds in some regions of the world. And those things will hurt you. So you have to be very, very careful. And a lot of people will carry a bat on the boat to uh, put a cobia out quickly. So that way it doesn't bang up your boat or hurt you too. And they have super, super tough skin. Very similar to a shark. If you guys remember me saying, I thought there was a shark out there. And then I realized it was a cobia. And the next day we went fishing, there was a shark on the surface and I thought it was a cobia. So you just never know. You never can tell. But going on over the uh, big, big bone here, they got a big spine bone that sticks out. And that's where the flex of this blade comes in. 
Ooh, the meat looks delicious. This fish got bled out pretty good from the gaff shots. So I did not have to bleed this beautiful fish. And then he's got a big old stomach. You can see making quick work of them and we're just keeping them upright because that's the best way to do it. If I flip them on his side, you'd just be awkwardly shaped with this huge weird head. So we're keeping them upright makes it the best way to fillet this fish in my opinion. And then just again, you can see that these rib cage bones really stick out. So you just want to follow that curvature of it. Try to keep it intact. That's where the gaff hole went. So that's a little exposed, but no big deal. We'll figure that out. But there we go. Not bad. Got that whole side off right there. Just move this carcass over to the side and work on this portion. So now what I'm gonna do is break it up into sections that are manageable. So, because once again, this is just a really big piece of cobia meat. So to make our beautiful loins and steaks, I'm gonna break it up into pieces that are about the, around the same thickness. So we got one thickness there, another thickness. And then this portion down here is not as thick, something like that. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll switch to the little seven inch, which is just a better rounded knife for just, I, in my opinion, like skinning and uh, getting the fillets ready for cooking. So you can see right here where the red blood line is, so you can kind of follow that. But what I like to do is go in at that angle and then just turn your knife and slab that off and we leave most of that red meat on there. That's not a big deal at all. You can go back in and take that off, but honestly, that's not enough to even worry about. Flip it over, same exact thing here, and I'm left-handed, so this might look weird to some of y'all. Same exact thing, just like that. So now we got our two loins, and you can see we left most of that red bloodline and most of that pin bones and stuff right on the carcass skin. And then here, you could just go in with a very sharp knife and take that right off if you wanted to, if that bothers you. So no big deal. That's pretty much how it goes with cobia. Um, and again, I recommend just keeping them upright like that, flaying off one side, and then doing what you just saw me do. We can put this right in the bag because the, the, fl the flies are bad today. But yeah, once again, so just go down in an angle and you can kind of see what you're doing. Take your time if you need to, no big deal. Turn your blade. Whoop, there went one knife. Same exact thing. So you see, we just got that big, beautiful loin off. Nice, firm, delicious meat. This is some. This is a lot of people's favorite meat in the entire world. Some family members of mine, that's their favorite, is cobia. A lot of people love cobia. So if you've never tried it, definitely have that on your bucket list. But let me go ahead and finish up this fish, and then I'll meet you guys in the house for the cooking and pudding portion of this video. Thanks so much, Darcy, for cleaning that massive cobia. Darcy's personal best. Very proud of you. Great job. And welcome guys to another edition of Cooking with Puddin'. It's my birthday edition. Yeah, it's a couple days after, what, the next day, whatever. And it's my birthday. I'm 32 years old and, 100 and about 144 months. But we're not gonna talk about that. But uh, so let's get right into this cobia, guys. Oh, first, I wanna remind you about the fish angler contest to win a trip, the fish with our sizzle. And we're gonna make a video. Link is in the description, guys. So you're gonna download the app, follow the instructions. Very simple and free. It's gonna be a great trip. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit first about something we never talk about on the show. And that's kind of what happens immediately when after Darcy's cleaning that fish. Uh, we take it inside and I rinse it off with fresh water. All you ever want to do with fresh fish is rinse it with fresh water before it hits the pan. Okay. You don't want to rinse it off with fresh water at, in the boat. You don't want to rinse it off with fresh water at the table, at the cleaning table. And you don't want to put it in fresh water whatsoever or even have it, the meat touch ice. Okay. And why is that? I'm not going to get into a scientific big thing about it, but it's basically osmosis. Uh, freshwater cells are smaller than saltwater cells, and the freshwater cells or molecules will permeate the meat, okay, and get in there. Saltwater will not, okay, saltwater molecules. And so basically what's going to happen is you're going to freeze a burn, essentially get the same effect as freezer burning the fish before you even get to eat it, all right? So that's the deal with that. Any professional chef will tell you that that is how you handle fish. So when Darcy's done, I rinse it off under fresh water. I'm gonna pat it dry really fast immediately, then right on a cutting board. Okay, now with cobia, you can see it's a little thicker than some other fish, and I don't like to cook fish that thick. You're just gonna burn the outside and undercook the inside, okay? Uh, so I like to cut it into some manageable slices so it's kind of even, evenly, you know, even, even steaks, right? It makes common sense when you cook it, 
that comes out all nice. And also when you put any sort of marinade on it, you're going to have more marinade on there. And it's going to taste better. Now, you, as you can see, cobia is a very white and delicious fish. It's some people's favorite fish. It's going to be a medium firm fish, maybe up on up and up into the firm neighborhood like tuna or maybe wahoo. And how can you cook it? You can cook it a ton of ways. And we have done cobia Captain Cook's very recently. Okay. You can marinate it in Italian dressing, throw it on a barbecue. You can blacken it. You can, uh, one of our great ways we did it recently was we uh, marinated it in barbecue sauce, just barbecue sauce from the refrigerator that we bought at the store and barbecued it and it was delicious. One of the best ways we got from a famous captain around here and that is on the skewers with bacon and pineapple. You put it on a skewer, put it on the barbecue, it's absolutely delicious, okay? That's really the gist of it, guys. As I said, it's my birthday, so I'm not actually going to cook it, all right? So I'm going to have a nice day today. I'm going to go low on the work and the filming. And I hope you guys don't mind. Uh, if you want to say happy birthdays in the comments, that's totally awesome. All right, guys. So thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed. Until our next adventure, follow, follow your dreams, dreams and keep, keep on catching. catching. Where's my beer? Oh, well. It's my birthday. Cheers. <laughs>